Hello everyone, I'm Joshua. Today I want to share a case of an impacted upper incisor with you. This case involves a 9-year-old boy with an impacted 2-1. Look closely, the 2-1 is up here, with the radial opaque obstruction below it, and his 6-1 has not yet fallen out. Because the 2-1 sits right below the nostril, every time I perform this kind of surgery, it feels like I am digging the patient's nostrils. On his CBCT scan, the 2-1 was moving toward the anterior nasal spine. The development of his 1-1 and the available root space are both very good. What treatment plan should we choose? Extraction or attraction? Or you could simply hand the case over to the doctor next door whom you dislike. Looking at the CT scan again, I found that the parietal bone was quite thick. Therefore, I plan to place a mini screw there and use the power chain to pull it down. During the surgery, I elevated the flap to a higher position to remove the obstruction and expose the 2-1 crown. Remember to trim the cortical bone below to ensure it wouldn't hinder the tooth movement. Then, I placed a mini screw and attached two buttons with power chains on the buckle side of the tooth, using two buttons as double insurance. Then, I loop the power chain around the mini screw head. Finally, close the wound with primary closure. Have the patient return every month for reactivation by tightening the power chain. After two months, the progress was very good, and I was confident it would erupt by the next month. However, there was little movement. The issue was the mini screw was too short. If I had used a longer mini screw, I could have pulled the tooth further forward and downward. So, I had to switch from skeletal anchorage to dental anchorage, bending the wire with a small helix to attach with the power chain. By the fifth month, I removed the devices. I told the parents we could proceed with bracket bonding for the final alignment, but they preferred aligners due to less pain and discomfort compared to braces. It took four sets and a total of 107 aligners over 22 months, totaling 27 months for the entire treatment. At the end, I suggest further adjustment, but they were satisfied and didn't want to continue due to the patient's poor compliance. To summarize this case, skeletal anchorage worked very well. If I had chosen a longer mini school, the initial surgery and traction period would have been less than 5 months. Dental anchorage for traction was also effective, but had the side effect on the adjacent anchorage teeth. Did you notice that the overbite has decreased? Lastly, the aligner treatment worked, but less effective for extrusion and derotation due to poor compliance. That's the summary of this case. After completing this case, I felt confident about handling upper incisor infections until I encountered case 2 which you must see here.